Hi everyone, I'm Kim and welcome to Real Chamuk. Garments industry is such a booming industry in this country. And it's, it's very, it's, it's also got very razor thin margins and very comfortable it, it, as well. It, ha- it has become very razor thin. Uh, that's what I say to everybody <laughs> that um, you guys made money, we're left with the scraps. So going forward, uh, I always think that, well, yeah. this is the bread and butter of my f- family. Mm-hmm. Um, the business is running, my mom was taking care of it and she was doing a brilliant job, mashallah. And uh, I, th- it was time for me to step up. So within you know well i was still at university and all truth was just uh, blossoming i had to also kind of be involved in the garments industry so i had learned from my uh, my family is already into garments has been into garments for three generations now me being third so um firstly i got to learn from all my uncles and all my family members the basics and everything they taught me they put me in factories and what i was that like what age was that like they just shoved you in like jump uh so that was like around 22 23 when we were 22 23, 22, 23. Yeah. so that's when i started going to the factory on a more regular basis and learning and learning and learning and understanding because like you don't understand what goes into manufacturing a shirt or manufacturing clothes unless you see it for yourself for a while yeah so um you understand machines you understand the people behind the machines you understand the technicalities you understand the elements and it took a bit of time but after that Mm -hmm. learning from one factory which belonged to my uncles i moved to our factory that's when i could come in with something to give you know and that's when you had to i had to step up for the family the ugly question here how dare you just come in with the silver and golden platter at you and then just start to run a factory a little kid barely in his early 20s how did you deal with comments such as that and the more than comments you know like eglo to ashole kyo bole na rather it to je ishara ingite body language e ba kaj korar dhorone ashe expressed hoy how did you deal with this sentiment um these are things people mm-hmm. people think about not say and because because we were the owners i always had this you know my my i was born with a silver spoon in my mouth and because my mother was the managing director mm. i could come in and going from step to step uh, you have to get along with everyone that is there as well and people have to be accepting of you and uh, being bangladeshi people are very resistant towards these things resistant towards, towards change as well towards the change days. towards new blood mm-hmm. towards a new way of uh, working it it was difficult in the first few months i would say because um i had to be accepted and uh, people have been working there for like 10 15 years and everything so they it took them a while to adjust mm-hmm. from father to son father to mm-hmm. no leader to son so it took them a while but now i feel like they're very accepting of me they i love them they're very hard working they give their sweat and uh, they spend a lot of time for what we want to achieve for manufacturing the stuff we have to uh, our workers at shangu uh, we love our workers at shangu we consider them as a big family we consider ourselves as a big family there we think that our family members should be able to eat on time sleep on time and everything and no matter how much difficulties we face we try to make sure they all get paid within the tent we make try to make sure everything is done properly so that um they are at ease our workers and in return i would also say that our workers our workforce love us because they always know that we will look out for them because they look out for us and for shangu we have always been very worker centric yeah. we've always been open about it could you give some examples of being worker centric and open um well basically you might you want you understand that in, in an export oriented yeah. business if the export is not completed the payment is not realized mm-hmm. many moments like these we would basically take ods from the bank and we'd go like it's going to adjust with that shipment you just pay the workers that's what we want to do because and that has created a goodwill for us around our company around our area this this is something i heard from our hr team that yeah. um when somebody wants to get a new house in our area in ashulia where our factory is located 
when the landlord hears that they work in Changu, they are more uh, what's the they're, right word? they're likelier to they're likelier to give the rent Why? out because we because we pay on time oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it works out well for us because, because then they're getting the rent on time so that's yeah, oh, so, we want you so yeah we they're like we want you to stay here and then in turn people want people people need security in their lives they to, do absolutely to make something yeah. of themselves and I believe that our workers mm-hmm. they're the heart and soul of this company and they're the reason and their brilliance and what they know their technical ability. That is why we're doing well, and that is why we're moving forward at rapid speeds. That's amazing to know. Are there any other benefits or anything close to your heart which you provide to your workers? Um, close to my heart, well, we have been able to um, digitalize a lot of things. Was that a pre-COVID thing or more of a out of necessity of COVID, um, post-COVID world? Honestly, it was more of a pre-COVID thing. Okay. It was a, a vision of the big picture. And the big picture that Did I... Did he inspired by you, Naki? Alter use the website and creating all that, Naki? Did you realize it's digitalized? Acta part, isn't it? Acha, acha. Acta part would say that... Well, when I first walked into the factory, yeah. I'll, I'll, as as uh, the person who's going to work here, hmm. I used to see that there's a lot of things which are backdated in the 90s hmm. and you have to look forward. And... Well, we already know about smart manufacturing and I'm yeah. pretty sure you've heard of it, Industry 4.0 and everything. Could you elaborate a little on that? Okay, so basically smart factories and Industry 4.0 is when factories are becoming more digitalized. Okay. Um, machine work is becoming more digitalized and more quantifiable. And uh, quality systems, um, LC systems, mm-hmm. payments, HR, everything becoming digitalized and working under a more smart system hmm. that's basically yeah. a smart factory 4.0 so going forward for us it it was like okay we're some of the elements we have is in the 90s some of the elements we have are great some of the elements we can work on so for me it was i want to take the factory in 2040 right now and how are we going to do that we're going to need to implement digitalization into it what do we do so okay the, what we did was we built our own enterprise resource program from scratch uh from scratch more or less we have was it a vendor or was it an in-house thing oh it's an in-house thing it's still an in-house thing it's a, it's, a, it's something <laughs> so, we've been working on it's like ordinary you're like shop in-house for buy the job um after a certain period of time you know that you want to be able to edit things yeah niger moto kore kora tailor made tailor made hoa is better fitting than getting ready made so amader tailor made kore amra korte parchi such as um there are lots of modules and everything that we could build that are not found in many existing ERP systems. So it's like the system online accommodated to the needs of your enterprise right. rather than the other way around where you have to bend to that of vendors. Right. Right. That's how it was. And basically, yes, um, I did pick up a lot of things from different people, mm-hmm. different factories. I, I, there's something I believe that there is no one who's self-made. Something I believe in, there's always someone looking out for you. By going through the ERP, you bolt out a lot of leaks. Uh, financial leaks, efficiency leaks, and a lot of things. And there's a more control over the company in terms of um, taking orders, placing orders of fabrics and of accessories. And as well as it formalizes all the procedures that are otherwise we call goes in a Bangla format. Another thing over here is that are you because it's custom made? Can you make it more modular? Is it more modular in a way depending it, it on when the orders modular. come in and go out? Because yeah. it's not. It's never the same, right? No, it's not. And yeah. the thing is, um, orders basically, mm-hmm. it's it, an ERP is not basically yeah. about the design mm-hmm. or the fashion elements of the order. It's more about the quantity, the price, yeah. the fabrics that you're going to require. And it's basically to run the factory. You need a program to run the factory. We, back in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 2000s, we didn't have this. And as time is progressing, mm-hmm. we can say that if you do have this, yeah. then you know you have proper control over your company. Not and you just, can really fine tune. You can fine tune yeah. a lot of elements. For example, when we order fabrics from abroad, I always have to approve it. If I don't approve it, it's not going to get ordered. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I we have a system that... We take, um, we put the inquiry to mm-hmm. three other suppliers and the best price wins and yeah. the best quality wins. We have um, very good suppliers from China, we have very good suppliers from India 
and uh, with them what it is is that we have good relationships that's why they try to give, provide us the best price and mm -hmm. whenever we see that there is specialization or oh, let's say we're having to order mm -hmm. trans cotton fabrics then we will say okay let's go for supplier a or if we're ordering linens let's go for supplier b because we know what they're good at mm -hmm. and that's how um, and with with the erp we always are able to like work with our targets so for example we want to be able to make a 25 percent margin on yeah. the price yeah so we'll always limit ourselves so when we receive the lc okay 75 is the limit we yeah. can't cross spending this behind the cost mm -hmm. behind the goods that we're gonna we're gonna need the raw materials so uh, like that it's that's the order basis other than that the human resource is very well controlled the accounts are very well controlled the exports and imports are very well controlled and going forward the cutting the production mm -hmm. every element of yeah. it is inside and even post-production after shipment there are bgme requirements there are um, requirements from our bank there are requirements from bangladesh bank if you want to apply for incentives mm -hmm. we have built all that into our system which a lot of the other systems don't have and that's what i that's why i say that we have a we have built the system based on other systems where the other people have failed where the other erps have failed i've seen uh, quite a few erps so you've really them. looked into them researched and try to take a learning from it right because i believe that's where a lot of people actually go wrong because on a key at least in bangladesh if somebody fails they go like haha fail course but to be able to find out why they failed and to prevent that in your own model is a better way to go forward would you agree or not i do agree and i also okay. believe one more thing here that there's no one who truly fails mm -hmm. i don't i say this to my friends when they yeah. see, see something i said i don't fail i learn so basically if you failed okay fine great work on it work on it work on it and going forward you're going to fix it because that's how it should be and when we're going to the system there, there's obviously mm -hmm. scope to work for other people as well that they're going to have the incentive module which is not present in yeah. any other systems in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. There has to be like systems of we can ship in different PO systems mm -hmm. and all that which is not present in a lot of systems. So from us, for us it was like requirements from the buyer that we have to do it this way and requirements for us that we want this easier. That helped me and my team carve out what we're going to need in our factory in our system and now we also have a quality module inside so we can control the quality That's of the garments amazing. as well what is the sustainability model i mean we are living in a world which focuses a lot on sdgs right so how are you incorporating at least some of it because what people mistake is that sdgs bhabeja environment 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 no it's got a lot to do with gender equity financial sustainability it's a lot of other factors right right so how do you incorporate all that or how have you incorporated some of them into let's see shangu as an employer when hiring people what do you look into them so in um the garments industry yeah. uh, a lot of it is technical so that is left on to the HR team mm. but when we're looking for people to grow with us for example merchandisers or yeah. people who are going to be joining the commercial department or people who will be working with us straight up in the head office or in the lines as a, more of a technical brain than a working brain what we look for is potential what we look for is understanding we look for someone who fits our system our ways someone who's willing to give their all as well as someone who's very into a family environment because what we call ourselves as i said before is a big family and for this i believe that our company benefits because we work so personally with each other and I know it's not the case for a lot of people because it's very professional for a lot of people. But there is, there has to be a mold of professionalism. Yeah. And from that mold of professionalism comes the interpersonal relationships that you grow. And I would say that I have a good relationship with all my employees, even at the root level or the senior level. Yes, I have to sometimes speak 
in manners which is not the best mm-hmm. i myself do even uh, i'm a human being and i also get angry at s- certain situations and i also have to but i believe that they understand it because they see uh, me as a part of their family and in this big ecosystem you understand it like when your dad or your mom scolds yeah. you that <laughs> they're doing it mm-hmm. for a reason if some if your brother or sister gets mad at you they're for a reason and in our company it's the same case but what do you really look into an employee do you see trainability more or do you see loyalty more or ethics personality skills what is the one thing that would really draw you to an employee or to a hire um it's a mix of all of them yeah. as you've all really put them together but for myself i would say the potential and the loyalty is the biggest are the biggest traits because when you when you hire someone you want the hmm. the ability that you're going to train them and they're going to be able to mold to the company's requirements as well as you want to be able to go with someone who is very like minded so i think it's a mix of both like mindedness so do you want somebody to be like Yes sir, yes sir, a lot. Oh, uh, <laughs> my, I do have a lot of people who go like that sometimes. But then again, yeah. I personally believe that they are far more technical than I am. Mm-hmm. So whenever someone has an opinion or an idea or something to say, they feel free to speak to me mm-hmm. about it. Because um, for us, it is like, for me personally, I want people to be able to... speak up and say what they want to say even if it's positive even if it's negative because sometimes it works out for the positive yeah. let's say that we can deliver on time why can't we deliver on time? this is this is this then we can logically approach the buyers and the agents that we mm. want to do it this yeah. way because this is happening and we need some help mm-hmm. or let's say that the people in the production lines the juniors can't achieve it the seniors come through for them and go like you can do it this this mm-hmm. this way and it's going to come out easier for you and i believe that this mix of young and old as well as the people being able to speak their mind is very important to run a company it might be a different case for different people but for me it's like that we are a more female led organization what Se- is the ratio 70 30 70 female amazing so a lot of our people in the lines mm-hmm. a lot of our controllers they're female they are not just female they're very technically sound and smart women sdg5 right there as <laughs> right there yeah. as well as we are led by a female the your mom my mom mashallah mashallah um she is a wonderful person i But it must have been hard for her. I mean, she must have been very young to have lost uncle and then to having had to take the reins, you know? I will say that my mother might be the strongest woman I know personally. <laughs> to be able to put up with me and my two brothers and this company, it wasn't easy for her. And uh, it's still not easy for her, but she's doing a fantastic job of raising us and I think she has done a good job of running the company and everything right now she's more on the back seat but she's always there she's always there to talk she's always there to help and yeah it's i think she's a brilliant person and uh, she's the best thing that best mother that anyone can ask for she must be a tigers ah uh, more or less sometimes <laughs> more like a cat ekhane oh. <laughs> i would like to know so is there anything you know cuz growing up after a tragedy you know you've had to observe on team right work and everything anything which other women or men or people can learn from her from your observation of her in action of perseverance of hard work um or any incidents which really shook you or which really inspired you to be honest about my mom the one thing about her is she's very patient mm-hmm. and we of often forget that patience is and we want to do things now we want to do things fast she waited she waited until she could until her kids grew up until she could give mm. the kids to the company and they could build it themselves and she has this mm-hmm. incredible patience and she's incredibly loving she's very open and honest with people and i think these humane qualities of her has saved me and the company from becoming something that's not one thing people say about our company mm. is that 
মানুষের দোয়ায় আছে আলহামদুলিল্লাহ অফ কোর্স এন্ড আই ফিল দ্যাট মাই মম এন্ড ড্যাড হ্যাড আ ম্যাসিভ পার্ট টু প্লে ইন দ্যাট এন্ড মাই মম স্পেশালি শি আফটার মাই ড্যাড প্যাস শি হ্যাড টু রেজ থ্রি কেজ এন্ড আই নো আই ওয়াজ ইন দ্য ইজিয়েস্ট কেড টু হ্যাভ ওর মানে বাট থ্রু হার হার্ড ওয়ার্ক এন্ড হার পেশেন্স শি হ্যাজ এক্সপ্যান্ডেড অ্যান এম্পায়ার এন্ড হার পার্সেভিয়ারেন্স হ্যাজ ইজ স্টার্টিং টু পে ডেভিডেন্স ফর not just me for our family as well and it's wonderful for us that we have a f- mm-hmm. a mom like that that's amazing to know we would all love to get to know more about her and how was she as a mom oh, coping with best. everything she was the best she never made us feel small mm-hmm. she never made us feel like we were too crazy mm-hmm. because we were crazy <laughs> we all are crazy it's three boys you can imagine how the household was um she was very patient with us and she was she is not very dominating mm-hmm. she's very passive about things and she let us live the way we want we want to she let us do things the way we want to and i think by doing all that yeah. you under, you start to appreciate what your parents are like and how they are and for me my mom was that way that she let me do me and that allowed me to grow myself and i'm just so humbled because of that because my mom is the most humble person in this world she might be using an iphone and everything but she she's just the most most humble person in this world that's what i believe that's really sweet and amazing to know and especially being a woman and seeing a man you're an adult and we're all adults now appreciate another woman especially your mom it really means a lot and to recognize her leadership skills you know and her leadership capacity it's really wonderful and i hope that more men are able to see their moms or their daughters or their wives in that positions because it's well deserved because strong women actually give birth and raise stronger families right 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 i believe that i believe that 100% solitaire is well um, yeah. i've been talking to you about it a lot so solitaire is basically mm-hmm. something that i've been always wanting to do because i'm very much into fashion because of the garments industry and because of the mm-hmm. lifestyle that i've had and if the music i follow mm-hmm. the stuff i watch it uh, it's so, so overall uh, a projection of the culture which you consume um more or less okay. yes i would okay. i would say that but um solitaire with solitaire what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring streetwear and okay. we're tra- not just trying to bring regular streetwear we're trying to bring um streetwear with a theme let's mm-hmm. say so it is very abstract mm-hmm. what we're trying to achieve with solitaire solitaire is basically something that um we're basing it the first theme of it is a deck of cards so from the deck of cards we're taking inspiration we're taking inspiration from casino we're taking inspiration from chips and all that and what we're getting is very abstract very nice things we have a small team but we're being able to make things fun. hold on to that stuff so is the aesthetic of solitaire more glitzy like las vegas or is it more slick like casino royale Honestly it's more slick yeah but it has a mix of the glitz mm-hmm. because it's streetwear yeah. you you want it to stand out you want it to be different from what people are wearing mm-hmm. it has that very um, monochrome tone to it what we're trying to achieve is very urban then now uh, like in LA because LA is more funky more it's cultural a little more laid yeah back. laid back what we're trying to get is a little a bit of elegance in two hoodies that's just say <laughs> so it's a very unique thing that we're trying to manufacture and we're trying to bring out and what we're trying to um we're also trying to build one of the first brands that reaches a global market you know okay. so what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a brand that is a proper brand brand is not like a retail store that is selling multiple kinds of products or multiple kinds of wares what we want to do is we want to concentrate on one thing and then over time maybe build another brand or another brand that is going to mm. go into other elements of fashion so right now with solitaire is streetwear and it's going to be streetwear 
and going forward we have tons of great things lined up and uh, you shall see when it comes out looking forward uh, so what is the goal for mahir uh the goal for mahir is to be able to change goals all the time so honestly for me mm-hmm. um it is to be an entrepreneur across different sectors yeah. and i do not want to limit myself to just garments mm-hmm. to just it or to just social development i want to be able to bank in on opportunities not just because of money because i personally like the like building something from the ground up mm-hmm. and for me if there's an opportunity in let's say agro let's say um in uh, um biotech like we were speaking about before and yeah, i uh, love my biotech i know you love <laughs> your biotech and even um in terms of uh, fisheries and all that mm-hmm. i want to be able to think and i want to be able to proceed that way what is the one tip you would give to entrepreneurs the one tip that i would give to entrepreneurs is to keep at it to not give up defeat is not failure and there's nothing called failure so you are going to be, be there are days where i'm beaten up completely mentally drained and upset that what am i going to do what is going to happen or why did i choose this life and then again there are big high days mm-hmm. where the high is like oh my god achievements and things coming to play and those are the moments that i live for for so for me personally if i had chosen chosen to give up early i don't think i would be able to actually sit down and you having me having this intellectual conversation about different things yeah. of the different industries and all that so for me i i believe people should never give up on themselves never give up on what they want to achieve